Kathy dared me to do this one shirtless, so we'll yeah. see if it gets more views or less. Oh, this is good. It's a split test. <laughs> Are you ready for the question? Sure. <laughs> Kathy Vartuli of theintimacydojo.com. Bring Arie, it. <laughs> Reed Malhoutka from readaboutsex.com, who mm-hmm. is currently shirtless. Please let us know if this is better. Like, you know. I am wearing pants for the record. They can't tell. What's the question? Uh, so it's cold in here. <laughs> if you get attached easily, how do you know how far or fast to go physically or in the bedroom? Um, especially if that's what attaches you, that's what hooks you. Okay, so if you get attached easily, mm-hmm. and how far do you go in the bedroom? How fast do you, like, how do you know how to regulate your your speed of connection so that you don't get, like, Twitter painted? Mm-hmm. Well, since I'm shirtless, uh, I'm going to let you answer the question first. How do you do it, Kathy? Oh, we're shirt versus <laughs> skins. Teams. <laughs> Team no shirts. Team skins. Team skins. Um, I have, that's, you know, I think it's a challenging question. Mm-hmm. And I think it's very important to decide, at least have a, a game plan before you start getting connected. Mm-hmm. Because once the oxytocin and dopamine are going and you're like, if it's feeling good, there's a little once, chemistry. Uh, Shirts come off. <laughs> exactly. It can be very hard, and I can sometimes like, mm-hmm. oh, this feels so good. I can, I can definitely handle this. I'm fine. And then the next day, I'm like, oh, <laughs> like I'll, yeah. I, lo- I went too far for myself. So I can feel like a vulnerability hangover, or I start to feel like that person's really dreamy, and I have to kind of step myself back. Um, and one of my favorite ways to step myself back, and I, I did, I came up with this years ago when my sister was dating. Um, as I would have her call me after every day and tell me three things that were not perfect about that person. And it could be small things, but they had to be different each time. Mm-hmm. Um, to help kind of ground it and keep things, you know, like, oh, you know, from dreamy to, oh, this is really fun, but this is a human being, not like mm-hmm. this epitome of goodness. Um, so I think I try to have a, a some kind of like, I think I don't want to go further than here. I give myself a little leeway because in the moment it might, it might feel a little different, but um, I also know that I can get I can get Twitter painted. So mm-hmm. um, I usually and I I have been practicing telling the people that I might get Twitter painted by like if I'm like when I feel some liking towards someone and I start getting sexual, mm-hmm. that's I can get really attached. So I tend to go a little slower. Got it. Um, so. Yeah, I, I'll start with the the general uh, advice: just being pump the brakes. Mm. Like anything you can do to slow down something, especially when there's a lot of attraction Mm -hmm. or a lot of like heat, Mm -hmm. um, which can be different than attraction. Like, uh, so I'll break it down in a couple of things. Um, So, so my advice for people watching who are like, I don't really want to watch this man with no shirt on. (laughs) uh, I'll give you three things to look at. Go to readaboutsex.com forward slash protocols because there's a list. I, that I created a long time ago for myself when I was really discovering uh, how to be slutty, but also not fall in love with everybody. Because I had the, I had the blessing of like sleeping with all these wonderful people, and I, and just like if if the chemistry's good, if they're wonderful, you're supposed to fall in love, get married, and have kids. Yeah. Like, why like, would you why would you not get into a relationship with somebody? Who was wonderful? Yeah, the condition he is, so and the sex was great. Like, what are you, are you a fool? You should be so lucky that you found somebody. Um, so the the casual sex protocols talk about delaying that what I call imprinting. And I think those are really good, even if you're looking for you're not trying to be casual. It's a great in. conversation starter mm-hmm. for and and you know and share share the list, print out the checklist, and like talk to your friends and your loved ones about it. It can be just be really interesting for conversation. Mm-hmm. The other thing that can be really helpful is to like, just like have a conversation with yourself or with your friends about like, how do you crush? Mm-hmm. How do you know when you're crushing? Like when, when you say Twitter pated. Like, oh, you're dreamy, you're awesome. Everything about that person becomes yeah. golden. Glow. And you just start, you're like basically you have a great experience and you, you're high on somebody. Mm-hmm. And like, how do you, how do you understand your high? And not make huge life choices. 
the next weekend. While you're high on dopamine and oxytocin. Yeah. And this happens a lot when people go to retreats or festivals. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> Do not move in with someone right after the The week retreat. after Burning Man, <laughs> right? And and now that Burning Man's become more popular, like more people laugh at the joke because they we all of us know somebody who met somebody at Burning Man, got married, playa married <laughs> on the playa. It was so magical. Uh, and then like the next month they moved cross country to be with that person and then usually what happens is it it, <laughs> Reality it, hits. it crashes and burns. Yeah. So understanding how you crush and then the, the, the Do you have a link for something on that? Uh well the, it actually I'm moving into the next piece. Oh. Um there's actually I'll, I'll, I'm gonna drop another bit and then get to the next link. Another thing is to is to understand this concept of hot thinking and cold thinking um there's another psychological phrase for it but basically you know your boundaries when you're sober and (laughs) and and rational but then if you have like a really hot makeout session with somebody and they're a really good kisser your boundaries are like fuck this out the window Mm -hmm. and it's not that you don't have any integrity it's 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 there's a phenomenon where we get really bendy and flexible um, when we're horny or when we're in ecstatic states because mm-hmm. it's not just sex. It can like happen when you have a really great day at work mm-hmm. and then you just do something extravagant that you normally wouldn't do because it feels good. Yeah. So I, I can find a link for that. There's a Radio Lab episode about hot, cold th- and hot and cold thinking that's just really useful to understand maybe you don't do it but the other person you're sleeping with might do that and it's why like for us sex nerds we don't usually change our agreements sexually in the middle of playing with somebody i have to i like i'd love to do that with you but it's gonna have to be for next time because i committed myself yeah so somebody's like hey you know i would love to to play with you and we can do oral but like let's not do any fucking but then in the middle of this, it's like, <laughs> like so, oh my God, I'm changing my mind. I'm changing my mind. And then you like sex geeks are like, oh, <laughs> it would be really nice, but we're all worked up. So maybe we should wait. No fucking this time, but let's fuck the next time we get together. And that's just a more sober way of dealing with the world so that you don't have you have less regrets. Yes. Um, this all leads to the the uh, starting to understand attachment theory mm-hmm. and how attachment theory applies to your situation with relationships. Because mm-hmm. now what we're building on, uh, and so the the link is readaboutsex.com forward slash slut secure. One word: slut secure. And there's a great book by Jessica Fern called Polysecure, which is attachment mm-hmm. theory in non-monogamy. And the class Slut Secure, Misha Bonaventura and I created it. What it does is... And you're is, running it again relatively well, well, Or, you know, just go to the link. If we're running it live, great. If not, it's all recorded. Mm-hmm. Um, because this video, you might be watching it years from now. Uh, leave a comment even if it's years from now. But the idea of... Um, Attachment theory combined with the casual slut, the casual sex protocols, it's a conversation about, okay, so it's not just me crushing on you, but my unresolved childhood attachment stuff might also be going Mm -hmm. on. So it's not just that I'm Twitter pated by you, but I'm trying to create an attachment relationship with this person because, roughly speaking, I'm trying to get something I couldn't get from my mom and dad or the adults around me when I was growing up from this connection. But it's usually unconscious. And the need can be so great that we end up kind of like hooking into people before anyone even had a conversation about like, are we dating? Right. It's no. Now you're the you're the you're the relationship that will heal my father issues, um, and that class has been really powerful for people 
to realize sometimes we're doing things before we know that we're doing them and we're definitely not having conversations and the other person might be doing very similar things. That was my long-winded explanation for how I would answer this question I without think, a shirt. Yeah, I think for everyone who's pro shirtless, it's great that you had lots of it. And anyone else, just close your eyes and listen to, the, listen to what we're talking about. Um, please leave comments below. We'd love to know, like, do you get attached easily and how do you know how far or fast to go when you're connecting? Um, I love crowdsourcing and we can, we can learn from each other. And if you have particular questions, we love to hear them. And last but not least, uh, let us know, uh, more videos without shirts. Yeah. Uh, should have a shirt on and maybe Kathy not have a shirt on? <laughs> I don't know that that's going to happen. I don't know. There is one out there with Buck Angel where I'm in my bra. Well, there you go. Go find that. <laughs>